All right. Thanks, everybody. Everybody hear me now? Let's see. There we go. Yeah, so if you look on the schedule, uh, it says that I'm Dana Bauer, um, but that's my other identity. <laughs> I'll be Kyle today. Dana's speaking tomorrow. She wasn't feeling well, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll give a plug for her talk later. Right, so uh, as I said, Kyle, RGB K on Twitter, and I work at Rackspace within the developer experience group. And so we, we build tools to help developers, and then we try to support people with using our cloud and our services and everything else, and then um, donate time and resources as much as we can to open source projects with which we're passionate uh, and that we want to see grow. Um, and as part of that, I end up working on IPython and working on the Jupyter project, and, and some of that involves uh, hosted things that we've done. Um, like right now, we run the, the notebook viewer and temporary notebook system and the tri Jupyter stuff. And if you saw the Nature article on IPython, then, then that's what, what else we're running. Right, and so I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people in here know IPython. Like who, who in here uses the IPython notebook or console or any of that? I was trying to find a, somebody that didn't raise a hand. <laughs> It's always bad to do it that way because then I'm like singling someone out, but I still wanted to see who they were. <laughs> right, but but what, what languages do you work in? Like, I, does, anybody, what languages do you use? R, Python, Fortran, definitely. Scala. Right, so clearly everyone here at PyData is using Python. I'm kidding, there's, there's lots of languages. <laughs> all right, and, and with that comes, like with, with the overall IPython architecture, a whole bunch of kernels for different languages. So I have 28 here. I couldn't get all of them to fit. I think there's 32. Uh, right, Julia, Haskell, F Sharp, uh, JavaScript. I think there's like four different JavaScript kernels. Um, they're all over the place, right? And at, at the very, um, at the, at the core of it, we're doing some amount of, like for a Python, terminal execution, standard in, standard out, and communicating back over a defined JSON protocol over zero MQ, back to a kernel, and your messages. In reality, you're just getting this interactive experience with your REPL and your data and, and, and everything else with the code, right? And then people write these different kernels to express how to work with their language, whether it's, it's Scala or Julia or R or anything else, right? But, but what's, what's in the name? So as people use the IPython notebook and they're working in Julia or R, they go, what about us? <laughs> this is not all Python, right? Like up here on the, on the numfocus uh, banner, there's R OpenSci and Julia. It's not all Python, right? And people are gonna work across a bunch of different languages. Um, so we had to come up with a different name. And if you think naming things is hard, you should try renaming things. <laughs> I, I think it took us six months to pick a new name, and there were a lot of bad ones. This was the least bad one. <laughs> um, part of what's coming up here is, is and, and it's currently going on, and if you look across our repos right now, is that we're having this big split. And it's not a split of like, fractured tension amongst the community. It's a split of, hey, let's put all the language agnostic stuff into its own separate area. Let's make Jupyter for the notebook, console, uh, the notebook viewer, a lot of those core pieces that aren't about Python itself and are just about interactive computing. Right? So I said, it's not a fork. I tried to gather together a whole bunch of the new projects and put them all in one place, and I couldn't get them all to fit, and I gave up. There are many, many pages, and the same goes for IPython, right? And so the, the dominant piece that we have to now talk about is Jupyter. Right, so that's the language agnostic components, the multi-user systems, and so we're talking about the Jupyter Hub where people can all log in, share the same resources, same lab environment. Um, there's the temporary notebook system, and then we want to expose a lot of the building blocks for building you know, your own stuff on top of the kernels themselves, right? And we can get into new projects and explorations. Uh, the predominant, like, product 
if you will, that people are using right now is the, is the notebook server, right? You, you come up to the browser, you work with your data and everything else, and you've got this common file format that works across, um, you know, if you, if you want to share with a colleague the notebook that you've been working on, right? And that communicates back with the kernel, it, it provides the plots that you're doing, it gives you JavaScript interaction and all those bits. Right? And so these, these common formats keep us free and unencumbered. Right? You've got this notebook that you can stick into version control, but you can convert to PDF or HTML or just post to the web and have somebody else render it through the notebook viewer. Right? And, and there are news, news articles that are being written that are backed by notebooks. The people are writing whole books and, and all of that. Right? And so the hard part here is you know, where, where do we go like namespace-wise to make sure that we're language agnostic. So in the future, you'll be writing... Jupyter Notebook to get to your main notebook server. Right. And so, so one of these new things that we're working on is Jupyter Hub. Let's see if this will play. M maybe. Oh my gosh. I don't know how to keynote. I guess keynote in a keynote. We're gonna try something different. Okay, maybe I won't. Okay, all right. So Jupyter Hub is a multi-user environment. You can set up, for example, GitHub OAuth at the very front to log into a notebook serve to to a notebook setup across many users. Currently at Berkeley, there's a computational models class where there's more than 220 students that are all logging into the same system. They can work, do their homework, and everything gets graded out of that same stuff. Um, and, and at the end of the day, they don't have to deal with any installation. These are psychology students. There are students from computer science and whatnot, but at the same time, like, they don't want to get everyone doing the installation, right? The great, I mean, we have great tools within our landscape to do installation of those components. So like, I certainly go to tutorials and have everybody just use Anaconda. Like, it solves all the troubles. Like, who in here is using Anaconda currently? That's, again, most of the room. <laughs> right? And then beyond the, note, the notebook, there's, there's interactive widgets, ways that we can interact with JavaScript, too. I still don't know how to play a, play a GIF. Maybe I wait for it? Oh, it's playing there, but not... Oh... Okay, you can see the animation, I can't, right? So I, I wrote this custom widget to put together to analyze a binary stream, like shift it at different widths, or look at like a, an entire uh, file. And so I'm looking across what user bin awk here, right? And so I get these great environments to work with these, and I want JavaScript that's gonna work across R or Python or, or whatever, right? And the same stuff is there for, for Bokeh, like that we just get this environment that we can interact with everything. So, let's see. There we go. So recently, it was just just a couple days ago. Y Hat put up this um, open source package called Rodeo that lets you work in an editor and have a console at the bottom and show your data frames in the corner and the files that you're working with all in one environment. But what's backing that is IPython. They're using the same kernels, but to build an IDE that's kind of like our studio. Right? These components are out there and useful. Like, and, and now that they're being broken into smaller blocks, you can think about like, what, what kind of experience do I expect to get out of, out of the kernels? Like, what, what if I could just demand a kernel on the fly that I can do execution on? Right? What if I want you know, 40 cores? What if I need 20 cores? Right? It, it should just be about how do I get more computation resources and then how do I have one environment to work in? Uh, and so, as I was saying, uh, Dana has a talk tomorrow on death and open data. It's conquering the fear of open sourcing data. That'll be tomorrow at 2.20 p.m. Um, and I know every time I come to a conference, everyone has questions about IPython and Jupyter. So I wanted to make sure that I took time to answer questions. 